simply, this bank had an electric field where all the employees always wanted to, to be there. <laughs> it's a fractal attractor, literally, for people. It attracted charge. So it could be said that they felt better and more alive being in a structure yes. that was built and, and retained charge and compressed it That's in this right. way. That retained charge. There's the key word. If it's bleeding charge, it's bleeding life. Your refrigerator is a square metal cube and the food dies in there really quick. Why? Because it's a bleeding capacitor. So this needs to be taught to architects. But they need to understand then that all this bit about, well, I put this golden proportion in this room and this room and, you know, that's fine, that's romantic. But the fact is, the way the architect's paycheck should be determined would be you put a capacitor and a dish of germinating seeds in the center of the building after they've designed it and built it and see if that building is a biologic capacitor. See if that building can make an electric field to cause a seed to germinate. Compress the charge efficiently, then radiate the charge efficiently. It's true of seeds, and it ought to be true of buildings. What does this mean? It means in the future, buildings will look like pine cones, and they'll have the same materials as pine cones. Remember the design for the city of Prague. It's a rose. And just as you mentioned a pine cone, what exactly is happening with the pine cone over, over time as the, the different parts of it expand and contract? You know, the, the famous book, Vortex of Life, Fields of Form, in the anthroposophic tradition shows that the pine cone opens and closes very gradually in a gorgeous, beautiful arc, just like it's breathing with the seasons over the year. And what that, it's called projective geometry. Steiner called it etheric formative force. We now know that projective geometry and etheric formative force are names for an electric field capacitively coupled, yeah? Anyway, so what that pine cone is doing, and remember, each seed on the surface of the pine cone is a capacitor, a condenser, to condense charge. Each seed on the surface of that pine cone is deciding how much voltage does this pine cone need to suck out of the gravity field. It's an electric generator. Very simple. Here's the next little challenge for your biophysics department at your university. Uh, I got this really fresh chicken egg here, and I notice if my voltmeter is high impedance, and I put the voltmeter on opposite ends, if the chicken egg is fresh, I get about 4 to 14 millivolts. I want you to go to the head of your biophysics department and ask him, please, her, where the voltage came from, please, because if they don't know, I think they should get re-educated. <laughs> that voltage is life. Where did it come from? The fact is the egg and the pine cone are fractal. They can suck in charge literally from the gravity field and that's the secret of life. So all of biology goes to lots of work to get fractal in order to suck in charge from the, from the ambient field effect and that's the secret of being alive. And that is the secret of designing a building. So let's move on and talk about applying the fractal field to architecture. Yes, we want to look some, at some practical examples in ancient and modern, modern architecture to help us understand the principles. First, I just wanted to mention that the most important single concept in biologic architecture, in addition, of course, to kind of making a magnetic map to where the building lies on the ley lines and the grid and the magnetic fields and measuring the electrosmog and understanding the effects of electric fields on biology, the most important idea is to understand what is a living material, what is an organic material, and define that in terms that you could present in a physics class. And so what we've done is we have this table, which we will share here, showing that we rate all of these building materials according to whether they're fractal or whether they're opposite to fractal, which is called fractionating in their charge field, in their capacitive field. For example, <clears throat> gold and palladium are profoundly dodecaecosa in their outer valence electron shell symmetry, which makes them beautifully fractal. Gold, palladium, that kind of thing. So a thin film of gold is profoundly spiritual and serves biology beautifully. But on the opposite end of that spectrum, steel and aluminum, aluminum produces an electric field which is opposite to fractal, which is